And welcome back. Today we are going to be taking a quick look at the new dev server for the Apex Predator update. And as you can see, this is going to be the Tram A6 Intruder. And it's a 10.0. You can strap on 6 or 4, I mean, AIM-9Ls. And of course, one gun port, because I'm not going to be flying around with my dick in my hand. I actually like to have a singular gun. And I do think that a singular gun will be a lot more useful than, well... One extra missile, because three AIM-9Ls should be more than sufficient. Right now it's at 10.0. And the performance for 10.0 isn't exactly very stellar. Especially if you strap it full of bombs. But hey, with the weapon set that it has, especially with the AIM-9Ls. I don't think this thing should be a low BR. I don't think that we should do a repeat of the A-10 and the SU-25. Where you put all aspect missiles at like... Well, not at 9.0, but you're going to be facing 9.0 pretty often at 9.7. And I think that's absolutely criminal. This thing is pretty quick, but as you can tell, the roll rate, the turn, and the acceleration is all not that great. However, it doesn't really lose that much speed, as you can see. If you go vertical, it might be a little bit of a different story, of course, because now you're really like asking that thrust away to do something. But it's not bad. The flaps are also massive, and if you start dropping them, you will notice a... Improve the your turn time. But this is not a dogfighter. So I literally... I can't wait until I have to try this out. Because I hope that I have to wait a whole, a whole lot longer than just next patch. And then we reach one of the crown jewels. Or one of the many crown jewels. Because we have a few of these F-16s. And well, let me tell you. This thing is going to be pretty damn nasty. Why? Well, the trust weight of this thing is absolutely ridiculous. And... Well, it, get, it gets 6 AIM-9Ls. It does lack the SRH or the active missile options right now. We might get them with the later variants. There are some leaks in the files right now that the Chinese one might get MRAMs. But of course, we can't really confirm anything. The thrust weight is insane. We know this. There's a massive engine, but the fuel burn is also pretty bad. And you can carry fuel tanks, but I will cover those in a brief moment. The acceleration is nuts. The maneuverability is pretty damn good. But first of all, I want you to sh I want to show you the top speed of this thing when it's strapping all of its missiles. You of course get a Vulcan with only 500 rounds, 512 rounds, and the flares pop by two. So if you run mixed, which I do kind of advise you to do, then well, you only get 15 pops, which is not that many. The rift speed. You can go 1400, it will keep accelerating. I'm not entirely sure when it, once it rips exactly. But I don't want to test it too intensively either. Because of course this is the dev server. And we're of course looking at probably a placeholder model. However, this thing does feel a lot more finished than the MiG-29. Which I will show in a, in a second here. But I don't want to... Well, I don't want to show you too much of the flight performance. Because well, it is definitely not finished yet. The thrust weight of this thing... Especially in the fight here. Look at the speed. It is barely dropping. And we're going kind of straight vertical here. This is pretty nasty. We still have 20 minutes of fuel. Once you start going a little bit slower. Look at this. We're rating at 800 IS. Speed is like 960. This is ridiculous. This is really, really good. And they might nerf this. They might not. Keep in mind though. The fuel burn is getting pretty damn excessive. And then once you hit that 500, 600 kilometers an hour. You can tell that this thing starts really pulling around its own axle. And then it kind of tapers down again. The issue is that, well, the engine is strong enough to just keep this up constantly. But then again, well, you can tell. You're not going to keep this up very long when it comes to your fuel time. You're only going to keep this up very long when it comes to, well, your engine performance. If you're clean, it's of course going to be a little bit more intense, a little bit better. But... After I've talked, I went to top speed, I went to do some turns. We're already on half fuel. So keep that in mind. Strapping on something like a fuel tank might not be a very bad idea. And I'll show you very briefly what it looks like. I need to go to the hangar actually. And then we can take a look at the loadouts. Because it also gets, well, quite a few things you can strap on the vehicle here. Now how do you equip the fuel tanks? I honestly have no fun. Quite simple. What you do is you go to your weapon system and you can select it for the middle pylon. Now if you select this thing, you also get obviously get the massive thing on the bottom of your vehicle. And if you then take it out, you can still select min fuel. I think it's a little bit silly. I understand why you would do it. You might just want to go in as fast as possible and then you want to drop that fuel tank to then start fighting people. 
But you can tell in the top left here, you get another fuel timer. It's going to be next to it with like a little bracket thing. And of course, you need to set it up. So when we go to drop tanks, drop additional fuel tank. I will put it on delete because I'm going to be deleting my fuel tank, obviously. And then we just take off. Right now we are on min fuel with a drop tank. So you do get the additional drag. But a drop tank like this, you can actually, well, you can drop it. So if you get into a fight, you can get rid of it. The thing is, you're not going to be strapping too much here. Because this is going to run out in like two minutes, I think. But it's nice to have the option at least to strap in a little bit more fuel. Additionally, you can maybe say, I want to carry 20 minutes of fuel and the drop tank. You still get 30, but you get the option to at least drop it off in case of an emergency. If you empty out the tank, it's empty. It will fall off on its own. And otherwise, if you drop the lead, boop, there it goes. I'm not sure if it's actually going to be doing any damage to people. If you can actually drop it on someone's head and maybe get a kill with it. But of course, you're always free to try. And that is all we have for America right now, basically. Because, well, we're not getting many props. This is going to be a very intensive patch when it comes to jets, if you haven't actually noticed yet. Germany gets really nothing right here other than the MiG-21 Lazur. And the MiG-21 Lazur is, well, a MiG-21 BIS. But it does get R60Ms, just like the, uh, the Tech 3 version. But this thing lacks one other thing. It doesn't have the flap hold on the bottom. Which is pretty handy. You can carry the R60Ms, which is nice. This is probably going to be one of the better premiums when it comes to Germany. I hate to say this because it's a tier 7 and I don't want to shill for this. But I mean, all these other ones are just kind of mid. This one is okay. But I think for an addition in terms of grinding capabilities, this might be the best thing you can actually pick up. So the nice thing here is... Of course, the flare port that doesn't exist on the bottom of your vehicle, which means you can actually get to use your air brake. The thing is, do you really want to use your air brake in a MiG-21? Probably not. But hey, if that scenario ever arises, then you're better off having one other than not having one. And then we reach the MiG-29. Now, the MiG-29 is a little bit interesting because, of course, it gets a few features, which I will cover in a second. But as you can tell, this looks awfully like another vehicle. Do you see the similarities between an older vehicle that looks like this? It's an F-14 and right now it's simply an F-14 without the ability to sweep its wings. Which means that, well, let's be honest, you're really not going to be doing that much. Because, well, the wing sweep is the, the strength of the vehicle. But I do want to show you something when it comes to the weapon. So take the... No, this thing doesn't get to carry fuel tanks, I believe. I'm pretty damn certain. But I need... Yeah, you can't. So... This flight model is not going to be very stellar right now. It should be a lot better once it comes out. But there is a feature that I need to show you guys. And it's especially about the missiles. Because this thing gets R-73s as well as R-27s. And both of these are pretty nasty. But there is another feature that comes together with this. And it's in the case of helmet mounted display. And you don't need to set up anything for this. You can tell that I press my lock key. And now there's a green circle in the middle of my screen. And that screen or that circle I can put on whatever I want to put it on. I'm looking at the F86. So let's look at him. There we go. If I then look away, it should break lock. Oh, it actually goes out. But I can lock him without having to use my radar, which is very, very helpful. They are pretty damn nasty, these R73s. Pretty decent range. Pretty good pull. They are a little bit buggy at times. But they're pretty damn solid. The issue is that they are pretty damn flareable. And I say issue, but that's probably a good thing. Because we really don't need an absolute insane cracked as shit missile. Well, it kind of is. I'm trying to lock this guy up by looking up. R27 seems to not work. Oh, there it is. It's a little bit off center, as you can tell. These missiles are also pretty damn cracked. Upgraded R24s. But the helmet mounted display here together with the R73s, if these get implemented in a realistic sense, we're going to have a little bit of an issue. As they are right now, they're not that bad. But I, they would probably be the best IR missiles in the game. The only issue is that you can of course flare them, which is a pretty big issue. But I think the R60 MKs is the addition that this, this thing should get to start off with. The R27 is already good enough on its own together with R60Ms. Pretty solid. 
Like you really do not need. Uh, let's actually try to get him in the radar. I guess it won't let me. But you get the idea. The off-ball capabilities of this are absolutely nuts. Which is of course a nice thing about a plane like this. Is This should be a very very solid plane in the 1v1. Right now it's good. But it doesn't really hold a candle to something like the F-14. But my thoughts really are. Give this thing R60 MKs. Or the M's. Sorry we're not in Germany here. And just see how it performs. We don't need to test it out. With something like an R73 from the get go. I have a feeling that this plane is going to be strong enough. As it is. The top speed right now is a little bit ridiculous. Because we are, we are going to be reaching like 1500 something. But keep in mind the flight model. It's not finished. It's really just a showcase of the helmet mounted display. Because they are actually going to be adding it. Which I didn't expect them to do. And this is going to give you very strong capabilities. When it comes to having a dogfight. Or just simply not having to move your plane anymore. If your plane has enough G pool or the missiles that the plane shoots. And well just being able to look over to the right. And press your, your, your missile and just blow someone up. Is a little bit free. And then of course the gun. We are looking here at the GSH-30 or the 30-1. Which has 150 rounds and it shoots the same shells as... You guessed it, the MiG-27 and the SU-25. So this gun hits extremely hard. Right now the main thing is... It's just a massive upgrade over the MLD. Other than the flight performance... Which is going to be better when it comes out. I'm pretty sure here. And I really don't think that these things need to carry R60Ms. Or R73s. And I think R60Ms are more than sufficient. There is another thing that I want to look at. First thing here is the MiG-23 ML. Which is just the MiG-23 MLD. It's slightly heavier. But other than that they are virtually identical. But there is something you should be noticing right now. We have R60Ms together with the R24s. R24s might be deleted once this thing comes out. So if you are going to be pre-ordering it, be careful. Because it might not actually get them. I believe that the ML doesn't get the R24s in real life. I don't really care personally. I think it's fine for premium to have a little bit better grinding capabilities. But the R60Ms, are they going to stay? We don't know. The thing is, when you go and look to the MLD... It also gets the R60Ms now. So there is a very big likelihood that the R60Ms are going to stick. Are the R24s going to stick on the ML? We don't actually know yet. But the MiG-27 main selling point. Ridiculous missiles with a very good kit when it comes to the, well, the helmet mounted display. And to show you the flares here. Because it doesn't get too many. But how many does it pop? Unfortunately it pops two at once. While this reinforcer pops four. They pop upwards. They have a cool pattern. But popping upwards in a turn. It might end up just. You're just going to be directly behind the flare. Basically. If you are actually turning a little bit. I prefer when they drop downwards. But hey. Personal preference. Then we go to Great Britain. And Great Britain gets a few things. First of all we get the tornado. And I'm kind of sad to say right now this thing is looking like an absolute fat L. Of course probably not finished and this thing should probably get uh, countermeasures. Right now it's a little bit sad. It has a lot of fuel. So that's pretty nice. We're going to be carrying 30. The gun of this is insane. It's a 27mm Mauser I believe it is. Very good velocity. Very good damage. But the issue is you only get two missiles. And you don't get countermeasures. You do get wing sweep. Which is always nice to see of course. And it does make this thing a little bit more bearable. But really this thing as it stands is pretty shit. Is it final? Probably not. Most likely not. But hey. We have to do with what we are given right here. The second death server is probably a lot more indicative of what the vehicles are actually going to be gonna be like. But the acceleration... It's not bad. The gear is piss slow. And of course the top speed of this thing is very very good. But right now. I mean this thing. I'm pretty sure it should get flares. I'm already used to the helmet. I'm already trying to lock him up with my, uh, with my thingy. Of course this thing is made right now to be a ground attacker. You rush in. Mac 20. You drop your ordnance. And you get the hell out of there. Of course top tier kind of lacked vehicles like that. And uh, well. 
It's fast. It has a pretty decent bomb load. And it's better than the FGR. But it simply doesn't have the weapons to actually keep up with it. Right now, the speed... I mean, it's fast. But I'm probably just going to blow my wings off at this rate. Unfortunately, you have the same shell sound or the gun sound as the Aidens. Which is kind of unfortunate because this is a pretty different gun. It's going to keep accelerating. It's going to keep going faster. And of course, if I drop my weapons, then it should go a little bit quicker as well. Oh, it won't actually let me jettison, which is unfortunate. But you can tell that this thing is pretty damn rapid. But that's about where the advantages end. But hey, pretty quick. At least it has some ability. Of course, you are going to rip your wings off if you start pulling fully with your wings web back at about Mach 1.5. 1.2. 1.5 is a little bit excessive on the deck now, isn't it? Other than that, we get the Sea Harrier, which is basically a GR3. It's a little bit different right now. It's copy-paste. But it does get two AIM-9Ls. And Mike said on the death stream that it will probably get four of them. And then at that BR, you might look at a pretty decent vehicle. GR7, of course, is going to be better, but it's also at 11.3. The GR7 is, of course, has much better wings here. Because these are the not upgraded kind of shitty ones. And then we have the F4J. I don't really need to introduce this thing. It's an F4J. Let's look at the other weapons here. There is really not that much to look at yet. But keep in mind it's of course the Dev Server. And the F4J. Well it's an F4J. It's the exact same one as we find in the American Tech Tree. Is this going to be worth it? I don't know. I'm personally sick of Phantoms. But you know what can you do? And then we reach Japan. And everyone that just bought the T2 early, I got bad news for you. Because they are in the files at least. We're not sure yet if they're actually there. They are going to be adding a Phantom here. And they're actually doing something with the EJ Kai. Something that it it, it deserved. We're going to say, I'm also going to say that the uh, F4F should deserve these as well. Because while well, the F4F has literally nothing going for it. This thing now has a very good radar. I'm strapping the gun port. This is from a challenge series. I'll show you that video when, once it comes out. I need to get rid of this. Because I'm never going to fly it like that. Because it already has an internal gun. And yes you were reading that correctly. This thing now gets AIM-9Ls. So we are looking at a plane with one of the best radars in the game. The same radar as the F-16. It gets the AIM-7Fs which are pretty damn potent. And now you also get 4 AIM-9Ls. Which is pretty damn welcome if you ask me. Because the F4 EJ Kai was definitely one of those kind of kind of struggle planes. But so is the F4F. The thing is, right, Germany at least has a different vehicle. People that complain about the F4F having the worst, probably the worst 11.0 in the game. Which is kind of right. The Germans also have another vehicle to pick out. The F4F is mainly used now in ground RB to use ground pound. And the MLA is more used in RRB. And I think that's fine. But when you look at Japan, there is just nothing here. This, this vehicle right here is really, really sad. You might think that you have a bad time in the F4F. And you probably do. The thing is that the F4F at least has some capabilities of turning. The F4EJ, as well as the EJ Kai, they don't have the Agile Eagle set. And they turn like absolute bricks. So having a little bit of compensation there is definitely welcome. And the... Well... It only gets aim 7 es I know it's better than nothing. But these are not the radar missiles that you strap on every vehicle. Or that you hope to strap on every vehicle. So you can shoot some people down. This is not this is not there. This is not it. EJ Kai has a lot more going for it. But it still doesn't turn whatsoever. So if people get past your head on. You are basically boned. And then we have nothing else new here. And we go straight into China. China right now doesn't really have anything either other than the J7D. And the J7D is actually somewhat interesting because the J7D, well right now the flight model is just an SMT. And when you look at it, the wings, they are definitely not the same as something like the Lazur. I am capping out the ass. I'm tired, I'm sorry, I just came home from work. These are actually similar. I, yeah, I haven't looked at these wings in a whole minute. Yeah, they're actually the same. Right now this thing has the flight model of the SMT. But it gets a little bit of a different missile set. PL7s. Which are pretty damn good. Magic 1s essentially. But of course you get it paired with the magic water pistol. The missiles are good. 
not sure what this thing is going to perform like. I'm not really a aviation buff when it comes to real life, especially to this era of vehicles. But the missiles are essentially Magic 2s, which are pretty damn potent. So at 11.0, good missiles will get you pretty damn far. The issue is, same issue as with something like the J7E. Even if you have the best flight performance in the world, if you only have rear aspect IR missiles, your effectiveness is not going to be that great. Especially at 11.0, if it goes to 11.3, even more so. Because you are just going to be pulled into that top BR and you are going to be struggling quite a bit. Other than that, China gets basically nothing. And just to show you, this thing does get a skin. There you have it. I do prefer the stock one. But you know, I like the clean grey, white, uh, maybe black camos. I'm not really a fan of ground camos, but... I mean, I've been over this. I don't really need to say this for a 2,000th time on my channel. And then we have Italy. Italy gets a whole lot of nothing. It gets the 104S, which is a copy-paste of the other one. But it does get a nice little skin. It also gets the cat skin, of course, from the pre-order. But hey, I mean, there's not really, not really much to say here. It's, a, it's an F104S. It doesn't get countermeasures. You're not able to carry the gun or the, the gun with the radar missiles. So you are forced to basically take this loadout. But the thing is you only get AIM-9Ps. Which are AIM-9J. So it's the same as the other one. It's just no countermeasures. 10.7. New top BR is 11.7. And they have all aspect missiles. All aspect IR missiles even. So you can't even notch them. You are going to be eating shit in this thing. Very likely depending on what they do to the BRs. Not... Not a great pickup. You're probably much better off with the Ariad. Much lower BR as well. And as it stands right now. There is no F-16 yet. They might add it. They might also add the Tornado. We aren't actually sure yet. What they are going to be adding. If they get something on the second death server. We will definitely take a look at it. But right now. Because most of the flight models are somewhat unfinished. I don't want to do these tests with the F-16s versus a lot of vehicles. But the F-16 should rinse almost everything that we have currently. And until they update the MiG-29, we can't really tell what they are going to be like. So right now, another jet, another copy-paste. It's a premium, so it's somewhat okay. But again, I'm not a fan of these. These what? You can ask me in the comments down below. France gets absolutely nothing currently. They might get something here. I hope they get a premium. Uh, yes, I say it again. Tier 7 premium. Mainly, I'm... I'm hoping they add something useful. I hope they add something with flares and good missiles. So you can at least go and grind by going for air superiority. Because this is all shit if you want to actually fly a fighter. This thing has nothing going for it. This thing is good. And if you want to know how much GE this thing costs, you can ask Glitched in the comments as well. I'm sure he's going to be there. But all these planes, if you actually want to go air to air, are pretty shit. So I hope they add something that you can actually fly out and go air to air with. But time will tell. Sweden. In the files, we have found some things. Some pretty scary things. And I don't want to say it too soon. But I think it was a J-35J. Which has flares. And it also gets MRAMs. But again, they are in the files. Doesn't mean that they are going to be there. Because, well, the PL-8s as well as the Python 3s have been in the files for a very long time. And luckily, they aren't in the game yet. But talking about Python 3s, maybe the Kefir gets them. They were saying that the Kefir doesn't need them because it would be overkill. Because the Kefir is performing well enough. And then what do they do? They add two vehicles. They add the Kefir Canard, which is probably... It's okay in terms of grinding, but the Kefir is... This thing, let me tell you, the Kefir C2 is not fun. It is one of the worst top tiers in the game. Well, 11.0 won't be top tier anymore, but you get what I'm saying. You only get two AIM-9Gs here. And of course, some options to carry some bombs. But I mean, in general, this is not a good look. And the Kavir Canard is worse. It gets a worse engine. It gets worse performance. The Canards are smaller. And all in all, this thing is not looking too hot. Well, it's pretty hot when it comes to the engine. But that's about it. This thing is not going to be doing very well, I think, if they don't lower the BR. Of course, you can run it as a bomb slat, which is the same thing as you can do with the Kefir and the Milan and stuff like that. But I don't think that's indicative of a good vehicle. That's indicative of having a brain dead grinder that you can actually get your money's worth out of. You're not getting your money's worth out of it in the fun factor. But hey, you're getting your money's worth some way or the other. And then, of course, the 
Israelis also get another F-16. And looks pretty good. I th this is one of the few plays where I like these kind of camos on it. But yeah, there you have it. So, to summarize it. F-16 looking turbo cracked. Germany gets nothing right now. They might get a MiG-29, but we will have to see. The MiG-29 for Russia. Absolutely ballistic missiles together with some more ballistic missiles and a ballistic way to lock people up. The helmet mounted display is going to be an absolute game changer when it comes to closer range fights. And of course this thing is not final yet so we cannot really say anything about it. Great Britain gets shafted once again but you should be used to it by now. The Japan actually gets a little bit of an upgrade. Better EJ Kai gets aimed on else now. And here we are my... No, it's getting stuff to sell. I'm sorry, you can probably hear it. Now, China, we have the J7D, which is right now an SMT with magic wand. Italy gets shafted with another premium that's worse than the previous one. And there's no rank 8 yet. So, especially right now, absolutely no reason to buy this thing. France gets nothing as of right now. Sweden gets nothing. Both of these player nations have something in the files. But we will have to see. And then Israel gets the F-16. Which I think is very much deserved. Because right now Israel really had nothing to grind towards. And then of course we get drop tanks. And uh, I think that's it. I think that's it. The R-73s. Uh, I think they're too good. I don't think this plane is going to need them. But of course time will tell when, when we see the actual flight performance of this thing. And of course we will have to see how the missiles get changed in terms of balancing. Because we all know that Gaijin likes to tinker with them a little bit. Just like with the Magic 2's which would be absolutely busted if they were actually added like they were in real life. Ah, that was a long breath. Thank you all for watching. I will cover all the new content once it comes out. But it's probably going to be next week for the next dev server. I don't have any confirmation. This is just my thought process on it. And then of course once the patch starts rolling out. Well, we're going to have quite a streak of videos on our rant. So thank you all for sticking around and I'll see you all in the next one.